This is a 2011 Lincoln Limousine Town Car. This thing has the works. A wet bar, fiber optic lighting, and a wraparound leather seats. Yep, it's a prom mobile. And since, as a homeschooler, I never had a prom, this is a pretty big deal. Rumor has it, my guest today never made it to the prom either. His name is Burznak. P. Bracey Burznak. Bracey's got academic degrees coming out his ears, a BA from Miami University in history, a master's from Catholic U in modern European history, a master's and a PhD in political theory from Catholic U. And today, he's going to demonstrate just how much I missed by skipping so many poli-sci classes on this episode of Professors on Break. All righty, well, what do you think? Well, cool. <laughs> it's a little bit of an upgrade from the yeah. uh, Christendom fleet of vans, yeah. right? <laughs> Maybe you could teach me a little bit about political science. I okay. majored in it, but I didn't go to all my classes. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so we'll see what gaps we can fill in. So, Bracey, how many uh, limos does Christendom have? What's, what's, <laughs> what's your Christendom fleet look like? <laughs> no limos. We've got a bunch of white vans. Uh, Maybe you can talk them into a limo for, like, yeah. you know, VIPs or whatever. <laughs> That'd be good. We have the same hometown. So, I didn't know that until. So yeah, yeah. So I grew up in Columbus. Uh, went to college at Miami University oh, okay. in Oxford, Ohio, okay. which we always say was a university before Florida was a state, which is true. <laughs> and then grad school at Catholic U. So why, so why did you speak Catholic U? Well, they took me and gave me money. Oh nice. <laughs> and uh, I could be a convincer. So this is pretty exciting for me. I never went to high school, therefore I've never been in a limo for the high school prom. How about you? I did go to prom. I don't think I went both years. I think I went senior year. Sure you got no me. limo? I don't remember. <laughs> I, it's literally a quarter of a century ago, so I don't remember. It is a ways. Yeah. So here's what I want to ask you. So political science, or as they say, poli-sci, I always thought Christendom should call it political philosophy. Like mm -hmm. that should be the name of the major. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of it. Yeah. Poli sci, I would imagine at some colleges it's, it's thought of as kind of like the blow off major. Mm -hmm. But at Christendom, there's, it's very philosophical. Like you're reading right. Aristotle. Yeah. What's what, what's like the main difference between like political science at Christendom and it would be like someplace else? Oh, so basically, the way it's taught in most places is it's very quantitative. You know, they're interested in mathematical models, just like for example that you could uh, come up with to predict election outcomes, you know. Oh, okay. And, and so it's more a, very practical. It's very practical and not really very philosophical at all. Okay. We start with the philosophy and we don't even really get into the quantitative stuff much right. at all, except in like econ courses. That's and like you were saying, even the way we do econ is not as quantitative as it would be, <laughs> you know. No, that's true. Yeah. So how, how far are we from where we should be? Like. Like, Pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is Pretty it, far. Do you think that's like the two-party system, or is it just? Uh, it's like modernity. I mean, there's no, <laughs> you know, you could go back centuries trying to unravel the starting point of all the problems that we've got. Really? Right now. Yeah, because it takes a long time to kind of affect that kind of deep cultural change that you would need in order to have a healthier kind of politics. So what's the, uh, what, do you, what are you teaching this semester? Uh, intro to political theory. Okay. And that's, a, that's a two. That's a sophomore that's class. That's a right? sophomore class. Yeah, okay. it's required uh, part of the core curriculum. Okay. Poli sci four hundred one natural law new requirement for the major. Really, that's great. Yeah. yeah. How many people major in political science at Christian? I'm like, what percentage is that's it? Great, I mean, is it? That's a great question. So we're now <laughs> the most popular major at the college. Okay, that's good. Congratulations. Have, it's around fifty-seven majors right really? now. Really which is pretty high. Okay, and um, so you have a lot of theses. It was only about 40 last year. Oh, really? Yeah, so my other class this, wow. this semester is a new thesis seminar. When I was going there, it's funny how much people panic about their thesis, and I was like, it's a long paper. I don't really know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, you just gotta grind and it's it all out, the class. not get intimidated by it. When I was going there, I used to wish like all of my classes were thesis. Like, you know that feeling you have when you sit down with your pen and paper, mm -hmm. and you're like, I know I'm going to do well. Like I know I'm going to get an A. I studied really hard. Mm -hmm. That feeling, I've never had it in my life. But for papers, when I turn them in, I'd be like, okay, I think it's pretty good. Chris and I'm definitely encouraged to write. Yeah. And it's funny, like now, in the Catholic journalism blogosphere, mm -hmm. there is a there are a lot of Chris and I'm graduates writing out there. Mm -hmm. Like if you really look around, there's a lot. Right. No, we've had a lot of people get jobs in publishing. Um, right. You know, whether they're as interns or you know for full time jobs after they graduate, and I think it's because of that. And be also now we have a really good brand with employers, you know, in DC and. Oh, that's like great. Regnery Publishing, for example, good, is yeah. one that's hired a bunch of our students. That's so, great. Yeah. Excellent.
We were talking before about uh, your dissertation. What did you do your dissertation on? St. Thomas Aquinas, John Finnis, and the political common good, or, or something like that. That's so pretty, basically, that's pretty heady stuff. Yeah, it was basically a critique of John Finnis's interpretation of Aquinas on the political common good. So when you're doing something that's that intellectual for like a break, what do you do? Now you were saying you watched like a lot of the Rockford Files. I did, I watched, you, I did, yeah. So like that was the break from Aquinas, like you watched, spent a little time Yeah, to clear my mind, because like you, yeah, because at the end of a long day of working on your dissertation, you don't feel like reading. <laughs> so you have like the, you have like the DVDs of the Rockford Files? No, it was on Netflix at the time. For your class, maybe somebody could do something on the politics of like, you know, Jim Rockford's, I don't yeah. know, something there. Oh yeah. He's actually a very interesting character as a kind of American type because he always, he acts like he is cynical <laughs> and um, and he talks, you know, tough and cynical in a certain way, but he really right. isn't, you know. The Rockford is kind of a libertarian, right? If you, had to, if you had to put him in a category. Oh, I don't know. If you could, yeah. <laughs> It's funny with Netflix, how you have in Hulu, you, you could just watch things on demand. I was trying to tell my son, you had to wait for them to come on TV. Oh, right, yeah. I mean, like, you, yeah. because I was like, yeah. you would not do stuff. Like your friends would want to go right. bowling, you know, but they're like, look, I, it's Thursday night. Right. I got a big blood. Yeah. I got to watch, you know, Magnum's on an eight, <laughs> you know? Like that was the thing. Yeah. And I was trying to tell my son this. It's funny, I think what I tell my kids now, they think I'm joking. Like, dad, no, don't scare right. us. My but kids, like, you could, yeah. you could just, there was no binge watching no, outside right. yeah, yeah. of yeah. you watch the A Team, yeah. Riptide, and yeah. Remington Steel back to back to back. Yeah. Like, yeah, three hours of TV. No, that was the yeah. binge. But that's what capitalism did for us, right? Free yeah. market capitalism brought us streaming video, right? Yeah. You could track streaming video back to Aristotle. That would be a mm -hmm. thesis topic. Well, I actually use that as an example when I teach Marx. Really? Of capitalism. And capitalism is actually this revolutionary thing that's constantly. In, as he puts it, changing the means of production. Well, so Karl Mar for Karl Marx, he thought the ideal day was what? Reading in the morning, fishing at night? Yeah. There's no, there's Being no a streaming critical video critic. in there. Yeah. <laughs> When's the Netflix? <laughs> Who wants to read and fish? We can watch Jim Rockford every night. Mm -hmm. That's that's capitalism. Yeah. That might be its strongest argument. <laughs>
when I was going to Christendom, uh, you could say what you want, but the thing is, the graduates from this school that have, that have been political science mm -hmm. majors, they have gone on to some pretty nice careers. You probably, uh, lately, I mean, you, can you think of, I mean, you've been there at Christendom how many years? This is my, if you count adjuncting, this is, I think, year 15. Really? Yeah. Wow. So and you then, know but some this is my 13th there. year full time. So you've seen the, the students go on to do some pretty, some pretty yeah, great yeah. stuff then? Yeah.